Welcome into Mike McShane from the Show Me Institute. Mike, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. So Amendment 3 is the one on there that, that would raise cigarette taxes, 60 cents a pack by 2020, with all the money supposedly going to early childhood education in the state, correct? Yes, that is correct. What do you think about it? Well, you know, I think it's actually there's more to it than meets the eye. I think a lot of people who just on first blush who read it say, you know, wait, I don't smoke, but, you know, I have kids or grandkids. Uh, that sounds like I might be getting something for nothing here. I mean, I think <laughs> the big thing that needs to be that people need to know about is in addition to that 60 cent tax on every pack of cigarettes. And one of the reasons that, you know, big tobacco has been one of the largest financial backers of this amendment uh, is that it also adds a 67 cent tax on wholesale cigarettes. And those are produced by smaller tobacco companies that weren't part of the big master settlement. So that's that's in there um, as well. But I, and I think generally speaking, using cigarette taxes to fund pre-K or really fund anything not related to smoking is really problematic. Uh, poor people are more likely to smoke than wealthy people. Fewer people are smoking, which makes the uh, revenue stream less stable over the long run. So I think it's sort of it's it, it's it's a pretty problematic development. Yeah, you know, and and the other question, and I I know that it's there there are strange bedfellows on this tax as well because the teachers unions are opposed to it because some of the money could go to private schools or religious schools that offer early childhood education so even though it seems good on the outside some of the teachers are opposed to it for that reason um That's and the true. And, and the tobacco i don't know where the tobacco company in some cases i understand this has something to do with with the um the settlement against big tobacco years ago and there's some new companies in the game that aren't part of that and this would affect them as well and there's allegations that big tobacco is throwing money uh, behind this effort as well yeah, exactly. I mean, so I have up on the Show Me Institute's website, I did a long analysis of Amendment 3 called the good, the bad, and the ugly. So I think there are some strengths to this proposal. One of them is exactly what you talked about, which is that money would be made available to both public and private schools. I think in a lot of rural communities, urban communities, all across the state, having private providers play a role in this is essential to actually having a good, thriving kind of marketplace of options for people. But you're also right that there is this sort of strange bedfellow. So in 1998, the five big tobacco companies entered into, like, the master settlement agreement with the attorneys general of states all across the country, Missouri included, which basically said for all the cigarettes that they sell, they have to pay into a fund um, that goes to a variety of different things. And it was essentially so that states would stop suing them uh, over false claims, right, et cetera. Right. Well, these smaller providers didn't have to or were not there at the time or were too small, so they don't pay into that fund, which gives them an advantage in the marketplace. And this constitutional amendment would eliminate that advantage. Yeah, and, you know, I've, I've been opposed to this from the get-go primarily because I'm opposed to sin taxes. I don't sure. smoke. Uh, the the smell of cigarette smoke if I'm at a restaurant uh, ruins my meal. I, I don't enjoy it. It has nothing to do with that. But it's a freedom issue for me. If they come after my your cigarettes today, they're going to come after my Big Mac tomorrow or my Big Gulp at the Seven Eleven. I just don't think that the the government's got any business taxing a legal product to pay for something else if it only affects one category of people. Well, I think that's exactly right, and I think there's that moral argument to make sort of about freedom, but there's an economic argument to make as well. I mean, we're seeing fewer and fewer people smoke, which means that we'll probably have less and less revenue for this in the future. And if So there's a big infusion of cash at the beginning. A lot of people get into pre-K, and then suddenly there's less money. You can imagine these types of books going to the uh, legislature to try and get money out of general revenue, which squeezes K-12 and higher ed and infrastructure and all of those. And just the fundamentally regressive nature of cigarette taxes. If you wanted to design a tax that would disproportionately affect the poor in Missouri, cigarette taxes would probably be the best way that you could do it. So I, I think I'm, I'm with you on this. If we think pre-K is something worth doing, um, and I think there are questions uh, about the sort of efficacy of pre-K and who it's targeted to and whatnot, having some, some way to finance it that is broad-based as opposed to targeting individual sort of Missourians because we don't like their habits, I think would be a much fairer and, and, and more stable way to do it.
Yeah, I'm with you. Mike McShane from the Show Me Institute. Let me direct people to your website, showmeinstitute.org, where they can read your article, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, on Amendment 3. Thanks for your time. Have a great weekend. Thanks for having me. Yep. You too. All right, good conversation. Thank you for, for joining us. Again,